The Goose Gear G Plate System side cubbies feature a bullet line covered Baltic birch plywood with storage cubbies in front of both roll bar locations in the rear cargo area. The cubbies serve as a great way to score up the rear cargo area and create additional lockable storage compartments. The cubbies are designed to work with the Goose Gear JK plate system. The Goose Gear plate system side cubbies for the Jeep JK are a direct bolt-in unit and require no drilling into your vehicle. Everything you need to install is included in the kit. The fender front covers, the fender top plates, hardware pack, and fender side plates. For our install today, we'll be using a 7 16th inch socket, a 13 millimeter socket, a 10 mil socket, a Torx 30, a Torx 40, a 4 mil Allen wrench, and a 5 mil Allen wrench. For the first step, we're going to remove the carpeting. Next, Brian's removing the rear subwoofer cover. All right, so now we're just going to remove the Torx bolts from the rear plastic trim in the back of the vehicle. and the final bolt. This will allow us to pop off the plastic trim pieces. We will also remove the factory tie down anchors. Now, by pushing this tab in, we'll remove the jack access cover. We also have to remove this tab. Generally, it's a painstaking process if you want to keep it intact, and that's your choice. But for the sake of this build and time, we're going to go ahead and remove ours any way we can. There goes the resale value. <laughs> Goose Gear does not condone nor recommend you breaking anything out of your own personal vehicle. However, for the sake of our build, this is the way we've decided to do it as we are not planning on reusing this piece. Now Brian will remove the first seatbelt cover from the roll bar surrounds. So now we're gonna start removing the factory trim pieces, but be careful because there is a bolt back here that you can't see that is holding this piece in and you don't wanna break that. So now we'll remove the factory trim piece on the opposite side of the vehicle. And again, remember there is a bolt back there behind here that is holding this in. So do not break that piece out. Just don't forget to remove that bolt as we're now going to remove this trim piece. The bolt you'll need to remove is a 10 millimeter bolt located right here. and remove the opposite side 10 millimeter bolt. Brian's gonna do the first one. So Brian already removed the left side. I'm gonna remove the right side. However, keep in mind that we do have the 12 volt plug right here. So as we remove, we're not gonna come out all the way. We're gonna come out just a short distance and then about right to here, and then we're gonna have to reach out underneath and unplug this clip. So now we're about to remove our subwoofer. Generally, if you have one, you can keep yours as Goose Gear does make a system that accounts for that. However, in our case, we're removing our subwoofer. We're gonna be installing a Kenwood system in our car. And as a result, we're gonna turn this space into a storage space. So to remove the subwoofer, you're going to remove two Torx 30 bolts from either side of the system. And onto the other side. Now 
Next, we have to remove our wire harness from the subwoofer. At the top is a clip, and then there are various clips down the side of the vehicle that you can just go ahead and pop off gently if you want to keep it intact. And then go ahead and lift out your subwoofer and post it promptly on Craigslist. Next, we'll have to grind off the three studs here, here, and here. And for the next phase of the cubby installation, we're gonna remove the three studs that are left on the later model Jeeps. These three studs need to be ground away and removed and typically are only found on the 16 and 17 and 18 model year Jeeps. And we're gonna use an air tool in our shop, but you can use a Dremel as well. Make sure you're using eye protection before you start grinding. After you cut the studs off, be sure to remove them, but use a pair of pliers because they will be hot. After you grind the bolts off, you're going to want to take and grind down the other areas of this bolt so it's not sharp to the touch. <laughs> Same thing on the other two bolts. Before we start putting the cubbies in, we're going to need to remove the factory hinge and save those four bolts because we're going to bolt this back over the cubbies. I did forget to mention, but we're using a Torx 30 bit for this. So we're going to take out the last bolt here and then we're going to slide the hinge mechanism out of the little pocket that it fits into. So now we're going to take and pop these two plastic zip ties out of their factory location so that we can reroute this around the cubbies. Now that we've removed all the interior pieces, we can begin the installation of the cubbies and then move on to the plate. And now we're going to start putting in the brackets for the cubbies. And the cubby bracket is going to go in the forwardmost bolt that holds your hard top on. We're going to take this bolt out and replace it with another bolt, an M6 with a washer and a nylock, and we're gonna bolt that through, and then this is going to attach underneath, and we'll do that now. It's important to note that when you take these out and when you reinstall them, that you don't over tighten them because this is just fiberglass and it's easy to break. Now you're gonna to wanna to take and peel the carpet back and get it out of your way. I also typically will take this wire and pull it down so it's a little bit out of the way so it's easier to work. This bowl is much longer, you can see it'll start threading through the bottom. These clips could tend to want to rotate also, so when you first start threading this, make sure you get it so it's going in correctly and not cross-threading, because the clips are movable. Now we're just going to snug this down just a little bit. That's it. So now we're going to peel this back again and we're going to slide the JKU cubby mounting bracket underneath here and then put the nylock nut in place. We're only going to tighten this to where it's a little bit close to being fitting so it's snug up here but we're not going to make it too tight because you have to be able to adjust this a little bit to get the alignment for this bolt which is going to go through the cubbies and lock the cubbies in place. So now we're going to take and we're going to tighten this down and then you can use an open end wrench or you can use a box end ratcheting wrench and tighten it down that way, which will obviously save you quite a bit of time. Or you just want to get it close to snug, but not too tight, so that you can make adjustments later on when it's time to put the cubby tops in. That's probably good to start. That's it. Now that you're getting ready to put the cubbies in on the driver's side, we've got to remove this plug and disconnect this windshield washer line and pull this down. All right, so now we're gonna start installing the driver's side cubbies. We're gonna start by putting in the vertical platform in. 
it's going to fit around this trim piece, but you have to first peel back this rubber grommet, a rubber gasket. So we're gonna slide this vertical support back on the driver's side back into position, and then we're gonna put the rubber gasket back into place. And it should give you a pretty nice seal right here, and this should fit pretty snugly right back here so it's centered on the opening right here. So now we're gonna take and we're gonna install the cubby front infill panel onto the extrusion at the front of the cubbies. I'm just gonna loosen these T-nuts up so they're a little bit loose so that you can slide this down the aluminum extrusion. It can be a little bit tight at times, so just have some patience and understand that it's a tight fit. You wanna get it about flush with the top of this piece right here and then just snug these up. This is also a great location to add USB outlets, 12 volt power ports, and that kind of thing. You can drill it through here, mount it here, and have it covered by the cubbies, which gives you really good access inside the vehicle for later on accessories. Now that we're gonna do the driver's side cubby top, we're gonna to remove the access door and move it aside. And then we're gonna take the cubby cover, roll bar surrounds off, as these get installed after this top plate is installed to the cubbies. These bolts should come to you with anti-seize on them. If they do not, be sure to add that. If you do remove and reinstall these bolts again and again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you add anti-seize because they are stainless steel. So before we put this cubby cover on, we're gonna have to remove these T-nuts because those get slid in by hand and then we bolt the cubby cover to the top. There are four bolts total. So now this is going in place, a real easy way to cheat and get these bolts in line or at least close to being in position. You have to take these T-nuts and slide them into the extrusion. The two in the back, we're gonna take and we're gonna align these two T-nuts up with the bolt holes so that they're in alignment this way. So that when we roll this over, it'll be a little easier to install. Now that we're ready to take the top cover on, we take it and wrap it around the roll bar. We pull these wires and the water line up underneath. You're gonna take these lines and you're gonna push them up through this port in the back of the cubby cover. Now you're gonna seat this position and try and get these lined up and then bolt these bolts in. Okay, so now we're going to attach the top plate to the side of the cubby. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you need to take these T-nuts and get them aligned with the holes in these plates. And this one's a little bit off, so I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. And then you can take a little peek from the top and you can actually use your Allen wrench and just get it centered. And when you're putting these bolts in, those T-nuts tend to wanna to slide around in that rail. So you just gotta gently thread it until it starts to bite. Now you know it's in, you just leave it in there, but don't tighten it too much because you gotta go to the next one and have some room to move. So again, I'm gonna take the Allen wrench again. I'm gonna center this bolt in the hole, drop the Allen bolt in place and then thread it in place. And that bit really well so it's in there. Again, it's just snug, but it's not tight. Okay, now we're gonna move to the back of the plate. And we're going to make sure these bolts again are aligned. The T-nuts are in place. And they're centered in the hole. I'm gonna drop these two bolts in place. Thread it in. Oh, that one's not lined up properly, so pull this out and get it in the center. That felt good. There we go. So now this can be snug down and we can work our way backwards and snug all these four bolts down into place. So when you're tightening all these bolts, it's good just to get them snug. You can start seeing a little deformation of the bullet liner and that's when you know you're good. It's just snug. Now we're gonna take and we're gonna add this quarter 20 bolt into this hole which catches the bracket that is attached to the factory hardtop mount. 
easiest to take your Allen wrench and just get the alignment set. Drop the bolt in, hold the bracket from underneath and just keep it level to the bolt and then snug this up. Now that this is snug, we're gonna take this out. We're gonna take our box end wrench again. And we're gonna weasel it in here underneath that bolt and snug that bolt up for the bottom of the hard top to hold the bracket in place. It takes a little bit of work, but you'll get it in there and then you can tighten it down. Again, when you tighten that, you just wanna do it snug. You don't wanna over tighten it because it is on the hard top. Take your wrench and get it out. Push the carpet back into place. Now that the top panel is in on the driver's side cubby, we're gonna go ahead and attach the water line back up. And then we're gonna reconnect the power connection. So now we're gonna take the cubby surround, which goes around the roll bar, and we're gonna install these up here around the seatbelt. The cubby surround is gonna go over around the back of the roll bar and you're gonna position it in place and then start bolting it down. Again, when you're tightening these, you wanna make sure not to cross thread anything because it is stainless steel. So when you tighten these down, you wanna stop and get it just close, but you wanna give yourself some room because we have to put the other side on the front here. When we put this side on the front, we wanna be able to move this around a little bit. So you just wanna get this close and then we'll start installing the second side. Now I'm gonna tighten the back bolt. Now I'll we'll put the other side of the roll bar surround cover on. Put this one in place, this one in place, and then tighten these up. And you may have to do a little bit of adjusting to get these bolts to seat into the T-nuts, just because it is a lot of build up here with the bullet liner. Now that they're aligned, we can tighten these up and get them snug. So on this one, we're installing it. This little pin is getting in the way a little bit, so we're just gonna cut it off and discard it. And then this trim piece will just snap in just like that all the way around the roll bar cover. Your seatbelt will work now. Now that we've completed the installation of the cubbies, we can put the cubby cover door back on, just slide it in place, push it down and lock it. You do have a key lock, so you can lock this area as well. First, we're going to remove the bolt closest to the passenger seat on the hardtop. Using a Torx 40, go ahead and loosen that up and remove it all together. Next, pull aside the carpet and pull down on the wire so that it doesn't get pinned by the bracket we're about to install. Now we're ready to install our bracket. First, take the supplied bolt and thread it through your hardtop. And make sure that as you tighten it down, you don't go too hard because the hardtop is made of fiberglass and can break. Using a five millimeter Allen socket, go ahead and tighten it down, gently making sure we don't go over tight. It just needs to be a little snug. Next, we're gonna install our bracket onto the stud and with the supplied nut, tighten it down but make sure that when you tighten it, you can still move your bracket in place as it will have to be positioned once we install our side cubbies. Go ahead and tighten down the nut that Goose Gear supplies and make sure that as you tighten, that you're still able to position the bracket where you need it so it has a little bit of play. Go ahead and replace your carpet and now we'll install the next piece. So now we're gonna remove the factory zip ties so that we can relocate our wire harness. Be careful not to cut your wires. So now we're ready to install the side of our cubby. As you can see, there's a little cutout here and that's where we're gonna reroute our wire. On the inside, there's a little divot and you'll be able to connect the divot to this little extension off the side of the chassis. We're going to go ahead and pull out the rubber gasket here. Just enough to where we can fit in the side of the cubby. Okay, now that we've run our wire harness, we're going to pull out 
the rubber door seal so that we can fit in the cubby side panel. Go ahead and replace the rubber door seal on top of the cubby. Now we're ready to reinstall our hinge. Use the supplied Torx 30 bolts to reinstall your hinge. Once you've got them hand tied, then go ahead and ratchet them down to where they're snug. And it's just a good practice to use a star pattern going crisscross until you have all four bolts snug. Now we're ready to install our front covers. If you look at the back, you'll see there's two brackets. Using our four millimeter Allen wrench, we're gonna go ahead and loosen up the bolts so that we can slide those brackets down into this channel. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and line up the brackets straight up and down like this. Go ahead and slide down the front cover. Should be nice and tight. Once installed, go ahead and tighten down the two bolts. You should see a very slight deformation in the top of the panel. Okay, now go ahead and pop off the lockable cover and we're going to remove these four bolts. Using your four millimeter Allen wrench, go ahead and loosen up your bolts. Next, we're going to remove these four bolts and make sure you're careful not to lose the brackets underneath. To figure out which way that these brackets need to be oriented, you'll notice that one side is indented, the other side is extruded. The extruded side needs to be facing down and the indented side needs to be facing up. Now, we're gonna go ahead and place in our brackets. Two will go down each slider. So now, using the back side of our plate, we're going to go ahead and line up where our brackets need to be about positioned. Now with our brackets in place, we're ready to install the top plate. Clear your seatbelt and come in through the side. You might have to go a little high to clear the roll bar and then position the plate right on top. Now, we just want to make sure that we're lined up with our bracket and our hole. And so using our Allen wrench, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we have clear passage straight to the threads. After alignment, go ahead, place your bolts and gently tighten them down and do the same with the remaining three bolts. And our final bolt. Now that we've installed our top plate, we wanna make sure that we mount to our bracket to secure the cubby. Again, using your Allen wrench or similar tool, go ahead and make sure that you have a nice lineup from where the hole is to the nut below, and go ahead and tighten down your four millimeter bolt. And we're done. Now we're ready to install our roll bar covers. One thing I gotta say is it's been so easy to install the cubbies and this is probably one of the hardest pieces that we're gonna do. Okay, first we'll install the back piece. Once again, just tighten them down to where they feel snug. 
and the second half. Now, all that's left to do is reinstall your seatbelt trim cover and your roll bar covering. And finally, replace your lockable cover. <laughs>